Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Andrew, and if you're here, it's to learn more about cryptocurrencies. Today we're going to be going over how to use the Uniswap Decentralized Exchange. If you need a reminder of what a decentralized exchange is versus a centralized exchange, see my previous video and I'll walk you through that. But this video, the purpose of this is so you can actually know how to navigate this and do a transaction on this site. So make sure you go to uniswap.org and that is the site for it. Sometimes there's some copy sites that, you know, their whole goal is to, to drain your wallet. So make sure you go to uniswap.org and you are good to go. When you have a MetaMask wallet and you can connect other wallets as well, but I primarily use MetaMask, then that's all you need to connect to here. So it's really simple. You just connect to the wallet here and choose whichever wallet you want to connect to. So you would, for me, I would click MetaMask and then I would click connect and you would see that your wallet, your wallet number will pop up here and you'll see that your wallet is connected. Your funds then will, at least your Ethereum, will then populate right here with the amount of Ethereum that you have in there. There will be a button right here that says max and you can max out all your Ethereum for this transaction here. Now on this down arrow here, you can select whichever altcoin you actually want to exchange with. Now, as a reminder, you know, you might be hearing about these a bunch of different altcoins and you say, oh, I'll just buy that on the Uniswap exchange. Well, it doesn't really work like that because, you know, there's a number of different blockchains. There's the Ethereum blockchain, then there's the Binance smart chain where you need a different token and a different exchange to buy altcoins that lie on that blockchain. So these ones have to be Ethereum based. So once you know that, then we can connect the, the coin here. And this one, for instance, we're gonna connect, or we wanna swap for engine. So show what the, the price of engine is. And a tip is that you want to, you maybe have to adjust your slippage tolerance. So if you hit connect, or if you hit um, to actually do this transaction, and you get an error message, one of the reasons why is because your slippage tolerance might not be enough. If you're in a very, if you're trying to buy a very uh, highly volatile coin, maybe it's like a micro coin or something that's you know getting a lot of attention where it's going way up or maybe it's going way down, which I wouldn't know why you want to buy a coin that's going way down um, unless you're buying a dip. But in that case, what, by the time you select this, and you actually hit click to do the transaction, the price might be falling or rising so quickly that it falls without of this range and it'll just reject the, or give you an error code that the, the transaction didn't go through. So in that case, you just have to adjust your slippage tolerance. For really any coin, about a five to 11% slippage tolerance usually works. If it's really highly volatile, then a 25, you might have to bump it up to like a 20 to 30% slippage tolerance to get that transaction done. Also, if you hit max here where the button's right here and you max out all your Ethereum to do this, then when you hit the transaction, you might get an error that says insufficient funds. Now you might have plenty of Ethereum, but what you're doing is you're not leaving enough for the gas fees. As a reminder, the gas fees are transaction fees that you need to actually do and make this transaction. So what you'd have to do then is go back here and maybe adjust this number a little bit to account to leave some Ethereum in your wallet to account for the gas fees. So those are two little tips. If you get those error messages, just make the, the adjustments on the slippage tolerance or uh, on your overall number here to account for the gas fees. What's really cool is that you can actually go into view pair analytics here. So if I click this, uh, I already have it pulled up, but you can see all the transactions that are happening between Ethereum and Engine. So you can see the total liquidity. You can see the volume within the last 24 hours. You can see the fees. As you can see, these are really up here. And if you scroll down, you can actually see all the transactions that are happening. So you can see a swap from engine for Ethereum, the total value, the token amount, 
of engine, the token amount of Ethereum, and you can actually see the account where this is actually happening. And that's what's so cool about this world, about the blockchain world, is that it's so open and accessible, yet very private. This is someone's account that actually did this transaction, and I can see that. I can see the volume that is happening on this Ethereum to engine pair, but it's completely private. You know, this I don't I see this guy's account. I can click it and actually see some uh, transactions under his account, but it's completely private. I don't know who this is. I obviously can't access his funds, but it allows you to see what's all happening on this pair here. So super cool, super, super cool. But yeah, that's really it. That's what makes a decentralized exchange so neat is that there's no real middleman. This is just a, uh, a exchange run on code. So once we do that and the transaction goes through, just a little tip, go back into your MetaMask wallet right next to your account name. There will be three dots just like this. You have to click in there and then there will be three dots just like this. There will be a drop down menu that'll say connected sites and then you'll see that it's connected still to the Uniswap. There will be a little trash can right next to it. Hit the trash can, hit disconnect and it'll disconnect you from the site. You know you're disconnected when you just see this where you see it connect to a wallet. You know that your wallet is disconnected from there um, but just make sure you do that after the exchange is done. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to be going over some other decentralized exchanges and how to use them as well. If there's any other videos or topics you want me to cover, let me know. But uh, if you want to get these videos, just like and subscribe and leave a comment if there's any other questions you have about this. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.